Hello everyone, thank you for coming to my TEDx talk. Today, I want to talk to you about how groups activate and execute innovation. But before we get to that, I should probably introduce myself. My name is Mark Barron. I have been at the front lines of innovation my entire career. I started out at a small startup called FastPay where I was the second employee. And most of their original IP, uh, intellectual property was created by either me or my team. FastPay eventually sold to a much larger organization named Avid Exchange, where I now lead a technology group within, uh, within a technology division within their larger organization. So getting to the name of my talk, I named this talk Innovation is an Elephant. And you might say, why elephants, right? Well, elephants are, when you first meet them, are very, very exotic animals. They're large, they're big, they're a little scary. But once you actually understand elephants, you learn they're powerful, they're graceful, they're, they're really friendly animals, they're very intelligent. And this really has a lot of parallels to how most humans actually grapple with innovation. So let me tell you a quick parable to, kind of, to show you what I mean. There's a famous story about four blind men who wanted to understand what an elephant was. So they went and they, they were introduced to one and they started feeling it because of course they couldn't see it, right? One felt the pointy tusks, one felt the very thick legs of the elephant, one felt the little tiny wiggly tail, one felt how the ears were all floppy and interesting, and together they had to come back and synthesize all their points of view to figure out what that elephant was. Alone, each of them only had a little piece of what an elephant meant, but together they could actually have an idea of what this animal really meant. I believe this story has a lot to do with how innovation works in a larger organization. So most innovation ideas are just as big and scary as elephants. And if they're truly innovative, not a single person can't possibly grasp the entirety of the vision. You have to come together and combine your unique individual perspectives on the idea in order to really understand it as a whole. But there's also a second part of that narrative, which is you have to have enough faith in your own vision of the elephant that you are able to contribute. Every one of those blind men, even though they were being presented with alternative perspectives on what an elephant was, they had to be able to accept that their own vision had a little piece of truth too. The blind man that was touching the wiggly tail, he had to understand that his version of the idea, his version of the elephant, was just as valid as the one that was touching the big sharp tusks. Synthesizing those things is really the essence of what innovation means. Now let me take you on a diversion to actually one of my favorite topics, which is philosophy. And I want to talk to you about the 19th century. So the 19th century is an incredibly innovative time in history. It's the Industrial Revolution. There's progress being made at an exponential level that's never been seen before. And one of the most prominent philosophers of that period was trying to grapple with how is this innovation actually happening? Famously, a philosopher named Hegel was trying to figure out how history progressed because there was so much history happening all around him. And he came up with this very interesting theory that I think messes with the, the, my story of the elephant in a very particular way. So according to Hegel, progress was made by a driving force hitting a reactive force. He called the driving force thesis. He drive, called the reactive force antithesis. Together they would combine and they would create synthesis. And this is actually a little counterintuitive when you think about it, right? Typically you think of something that's a wall to progress not creating progress, but he really felt grappling with those, that alternative perspective was what actually drove history forward. This is very similar to my story about the blind men, right? The blind men, they were confronted with these conflicting perspectives. They saw tails and tusks and legs and, and bodies, and they had to bring them all into one elephant. By doing that, that was how they really discovered what, it, what really the full perspective on that animal, that they were able to really see the full potential of their ideas. Every invention that I've worked on has followed that pattern. Every time I've launched a new product, or reviewed a line of code, it was always by bringing together those contrary perspectives that was really what made the possibility for innovation happen. My best work was not the product of one solo individual working in a vacuum, but multiple people working together, having conflict, having interest in the same passion, the same place of innovation, and delivering something as a team. Now, I know that there's always narratives in the media about people like Elon Musk, like superheroes in innovation. But 
That isn't really the way innovation happens. Innovation happens more like the way the blind men made it happen, by seeing something bigger than themselves, feeling it out, understanding it, and coming together to deliver something that's totally new to the world. I thank you very much for your time, and I hope this talk was enlightening to you in some way.